So, Luke, uh, we know for sure it's going to be playoffs. How was uh, the reaction from everybody uh, last Saturday evening when that was confirmed? Well, I, I travelled separately back uh, to the team. Uh, there, was a, there was a bit of a muted uh, atmosphere in the car with myself and a, and a couple of the staff. So, uh, no, I, I think that we were in a, you know, in a frame of mind that we knew the most likely outcome. Uh, of course, there's hope. Um, but I don't think it was. Uh, I don't think it was a huge shock to anybody. Does it, in a way, help to know it before this game? Is it, is it better to know before this game rather than if it was going to be playoffs to know after the final game? If you see what I mean, when it might be a bit more of a. I think potentially it does. Yeah, I think it. You know, it helps us to uh, clear our clear our mind and concentrate on one single uh, uh, future, and so. Uh, I think that that will, you know, ho hopefully that, that has helped us. Have you noticed um, a, a mood in the camp to th this week, a determination to make sure that this season counts for promotion, despite that disappointment at the weekend? Yeah, very, very good uh, attitudes, behaviours in training, brilliant. Energy levels, very, very good. Um, the quality in training, very happy with that. So I've been watching, as you can imagine, with a very keen eye even more so than normal, but I'm, I'm really impressed with the guys. Uh, so I feel optimistic that they're in a very good place. Do you find some players sort of take the lead on that? Is it you that's taken the lead on that? Or is it something that's just natural within that group? I think, uh, of course, I have to try to set the tone and try to address things in, in the morning uh, every day. Uh, try to um, get things out in the open and try to give an idea of how I want everybody to respond to a situation. And then after that, you have different characters, of course, and you have that in, in any walk of life. And football is no different. Certain characters are more extrovert and certain characters more introvert. Some guys are introvert but make big actions that, that with physical training and, and their, their energy, and that, that then speaks volumes. And, and others are more able to to express themselves verbally and make themselves heard. Um, but I must say, um, but in, 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 all, with all the different characters that we have, we have, a common, we have a common way of reacting and very positive way of reacting to any setbacks. And that, that's been pretty consistent all season. I think we've improved on that. I think the guys are even better at um, moving forward and expressing uh, positive energy um, when, when I've had setbacks. You learn a lot about players' character in weeks like this. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, we had um, uh, the massive game away at Wrexham in this period as well, when all the games have become, become sorry, more, more heightened, the emotions and um, what's at stake, and, and so we, I've been able to observe the players how they've reacted to all, the, all these different scenarios, and uh, yeah, um, on the whole, very very impressed with with so many of the guys. In that sense, then, I mean, some people will look at this weekend's game and say, "Well, that it doesn't matter now because you know, guaranteed second place and so on." So, why does it matter to you and, and to Notts County this game this weekend? It matters because uh, we judge our, ourselves and the players are judged on their performance and the way that they behave. Um, they're judged very, very harshly on, on those things. And so therefore, whenever we take to the training pitch to make a, a game, let alone Meadow Lane with many people there, we always try to concentrate on the performance level. And that will, that will safeguard us. Um, and more importantly than that, we, we, it matters because we have uh, people coming to the game, thousands of people coming to the game that have supported us in an incredible way. And they still need to be entertained. They still need to connect with their team. So it matters a huge amount and, and that will be made very clear. I really don't feel like I have to worry too much because I, I believe that the players are... In, the, in that frame of mind where they know performance is, is everything. They're in the frame of mind that they know they have to respect their fans. Um, but um, I would certainly make that clear as well that 
they they have a, a a duty to give the fans what they deserve. With the playoff campaign started just a week later, though, will you maybe use the game to give a few minutes to players who might not have played much so far? I, for example, a Judy Murray, somebody like that. Will you use it for for that? Or will you want to rest any players who? And not a hundred percent fit to keep them fully ready for, for the week after. Have you got kind of one mind on that playoff campaign at the same time? We uh, the team will be out there to win for sure, and I think mm -hmm. that uh, you know me by now that that players change, um, and and sometimes uh, controversial changes because I have a, a forward plan and uh, believe that players need certain minutes to be in the best place that they can be, and other players need time away from the pitch to to be more recovering things like that so uh this game will be will be the same we we will the team will be out there the, the guys that are in a good place the guys that i think are most suitable to win the game and you know going to give us the type of performance level that we need be the same approach and, and that way we don't have a change in mentality that oh, the gaffer is not taking the game seriously or you know, the players start to try to read uh, this is going to happen and that is going to happen. It's going to be the same uh, that the team will be selected. The ones I think are in the in the best possible place to help us to win. A new contract for Adam Chixer this week. Um, he's a player you like, is he? I think he's a player everybody likes, really. But <laughs> works so hard and talks so well. Um, tell us what you like about him and why why you're happy to keep him for another couple of years. I, I think that um, from the very beginning, I wanted to make absolutely clear to the players that um, I expect intensity and I expect them to um, to apply themselves every single day as well as they possibly can to everything and uh, many many of the players have been so good I think Adam Chixon from the very beginning was somebody that really stood out that he has great intensity and he's so professional and then I think his position was one that was not natural to him something that is not exactly what he's been doing very successfully in, in a long career before we started to work together. But the the attitude and the application that he's applied to a new role has been sensational. And really, I think it's hard for anybody to argue with the 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 productivity of Chicks this season. has been incredible. And many things as well that probably are not as obvious as goals and assisting goals, but the the way he works with the other players and and the staff on a day to day basis, the way Chicks is able to remain completely focused if he's in the team, out the team, um, all of these things Ooh. are all of these things are very very important for you know when when we see the match um, on the weekend or you know on a Tuesday night is the show, but there are many many more hours that go into preparation for the show and uh, Adam Chicks and excels in in both. It's interesting timing. Can we take it from this that you and the club are, are going to be quite keen to try and get business done early through the summer? I think it's something that's been going on for a while. Um, so I think it, you know, it could have been something that was that was done uh, a few weeks ago and and what have you. So no, I think there's a there's a few negotiations going on um, and a, and more that that will that will follow. So I, I think the the timing is just uh, how long it took for everything to be correct. Uh, nothing more than that is not a you know a signal for anything, really. Just uh, a player that performs at a very very high level, and a player that gives uh, yeah, a brilliant uh, fits in with the culture that that myself and the staff are trying to create going forward. And so it was a uh, quite an easy easy decision for us to make the offer and so on. Thank you very much indeed. Appreciate Thank you. It. Thank you. Hi, Luke. Um, I'll just start with um, last weekend at Mason. When we spoke, um, I think it was after the Wrexham game, you mentioned anxiety control. Um, was last weekend perhaps you know the biggest test of that character? Yeah, I think it was. And I, I thought that particularly the first 45 minutes was exceptional from the guys, really controlled the game. A difficult surface, and uh, as we as we said before, you you're playing against a team with with nothing, uh, no fear, and uh, can, you know they can surprise you, uh, and they change a lot. Their formation potentially 
when there is still so much at stake, it's more difficult for managers to change so freely. And then really the only the only issue in the game, as I said before, was my my choice in 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 substitutions and change the formation and make all these changes and with personnel and formation all at the same time. I don't I try not to ever do anything randomly. Um, I believe that there there could be a scenario where we needed to outscore Wrexham if the points remain the same. Um, they you know if if Wrexham want, wanted to ramp up they could you know they could really go into overdrive and score <clears throat> a lot of goals against their remaining opponents. So I felt like uh, it was a uh, a good time in the game where we were at a comfortable cushion, but to add more energy, to add uh, a striker that scored 41 already, to add a, a striker that is so hungry to try and uh, impress and to get off the marker, to to add a winger that is, has been incredible all season and uh, with, with pace and can create a goal and score a goal. So I rolled the dice and... Uh, I think that, that that caused a lot of problems for the team in actual fact and uh, they were able to stabilise and get to grips with um, the changes and, and they showed brilliant anxiety control again because at that point, you know, we, we were the early game and everything was still to play for. So you have to understand how brilliant Ruben's free kick and Jim O'Brien's penalty, how brilliant they were in those moments. How do you implement that? Because, you know, for the majority of the season, you've rarely been in these sort of similar positions. You've always more been leading games. Is it something that you can, you know, prepare for in training? How do you prepare for something like that? Because we, we have, uh, you know, uh, performance indicators, you know, things that tell us that that we're, we're performing to the right level rather than, you know, being lucky or... Um, you have one or two outstanding players that do everything for you. We have performance indicators as a team. This is where we're expecting you to be as a group of players and as an entire team. And I think those those indicators, those those performance indicators, they put pressure on players throughout the whole season. And I think learning to play football, knowing that you have to hit a certain level all the time and of course everybody knows that at times however good you are you have to grind out results but to to try to go a, a long long season and win many many games home and away just purely grinding or relying on one or two individuals is unsustainable so there's a lot of pressure on the entire group to perform in a certain way and to hit certain markers and i think that you know that that helps us to be able to focus on those things, get those things right, and most likely the performance will enable you to win the game. And that's what we've followed all the way through. And I hope that that helps the players in different scenarios where more pressure externally or you know less pressure externally. Because sometimes it can be a problem when you feel no pressure, you know. But hopefully this is the key, the thing for us is to really focus on hitting certain performances. Um, just looking ahead to the game this weekend against your the last time you played them, it was the start of that record-breaking 25-game and beat them. Looking back now at that game in particular, how important was it to bounce back from that defeat against Dawkins Wanderers? Because in hindsight, you've gone on this unbelievable run and, you know, tipped, gone with Wrexham toe-to-toe. Just wanted to know your thoughts on that. I think it was a big moment for me because um, we, we hadn't suffered a defeat um, since I'd arrived at the club and, and so... It was a big moment for me because I'm looking very, very closely at the players and again, looking so closely at their body language, their behaviours, listening to how they are communicating, whether fear is starting to creep in, whether they struggle to believe in the message that I'm asking. So this game was really huge, really huge. And the answers to all those questions were answered uh, you know, we're, all the answers were all given to me in a spectacular way, really, because I thought it was a brilliant, brilliant performance against a good team uh, off the back of uh, the first defeat. So that that told that that told me a lot about the group. And then um, just finally from me, 
Um, the, the club put a video up yesterday of you chasing a deer around a around the training pitch. You managed to catch a breath back yet? <laughs> yeah, just about. If actually, it's uh, it's not my first first rodeo with this win. Uh, my good friend uh, David Cole's a goalkeeper coach, a brilliant goalkeeper coach at um, Bristol Rovers, and a, an amazing guy. And he's a real animal lover as well. And uh, we actually found a deer one one morning caught in the net behind the goal in the big net that catches the ball whip for when you do finishing practice. And uh, on that occasion, I actually had to wrestle the deer to the ground because the net was caught around the antlers. Um, and he, ga he gave my, my, my good friend David Coles a, a, a right good kick just below the knee <laughs> and uh, put him in hospital, I think. So this was actually a milder, a milder version <laughs> where the, the deer was already free and I just had to try to... And actually, we, you know, myself and the staff, I'm not sure the video, if you can see the staff, but we make a brilliant press. I mean, a really brilliant press. So I think Ruben and Sam Austin were quite you know, impressed and mackle with the way that we pressed the deer and kept him in one corner. And then we make him, we force him off the, off the training pitch. So, you know, I was really happy with the staff. We had everything clipped up in the meeting to show all the angles of the press and the energy is brilliant. Perfect. Thank you for your time, Luke, and I'll speak to you again on Thank Saturday. you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Jay, try and follow that for us. <laughs> I know, no pressure there. Hi, Luke. How you doing? You right? Yeah, very well, thanks. Yourself? Just said, yeah, very good. Thank you very much. Well. Sorry for, um, yeah, joining a little bit late, and apologies for going over a couple of bits. But, yeah, um, yeah on that day story, it sounds like you were proper leading from the front on that, like you say, with the press. <laughs> yeah, we, we tried to position all the staff in the correct way, and... Uh, the deer was incredible. He was so quick. It was uh, it was very difficult to mark. It. We he slipped through the lines one or, one or two times. This is why we were so knackered in the end. Because, uh, but yeah, it was a, it's a beautiful, beautiful animal. Incredible. <laughs> Great stuff. Um, yeah, I was going to say so much more we could do with that, but I'll part that one for, uh, for just for the moment. Um, of course, yeah, I heard you uh, speaking about uh, Adam Chickson with uh, with David a moment so ago, and I think we even chatted about. Um, a little while back about you know his goal returns and how much more he's added to his game offensively and he's someone that seems to have come on, come on leaps and bounds under yourself. What's been the key to unlocking some more of that of that side? Because I think before this season he scored three goals in his career and he's got eleven goals this season alone. Just how have you managed to unlock that side of his game? No, I think really you have to know that the 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 guy the ca the character because he unlocked everything. He I had an an idea that. I put forward to, to all the players and uh, try to give them a good script, you know, try to give them uh, a good idea of what, what each role looks like and uh, the rest is Adam Schickson. And this is because he has this like growth mentality, this is because he's fearless. Because, you know, to try and to foul is really, really scary. So many times, um, we all in life, many times, uh, um, don't try as, as much as we should because we fear, we, we fear failing. But people like Adam Chickson, he doesn't have that fear of failure, only the desire to really try and apply himself. And that's why he's able to, to change his game. And I think the great thing is that, you know, he had many seasons before this one that were probably a similar role in each team, some small differences, but by and large the same. So then one year of doing this role for me in this particular setup, only one year. So I think the good news is that for a guy with his personality and his mentality, the more time he has, the better he will get because he has the, he has the, the, the perfect combination to do that. Yeah, that's an interesting point you say there about kind of like, you know, not being afraid afraid to fail. I guess it's kind of like I've heard a few different managers and coaches use the phrase before, positive mistakes. So I guess that comes into that as well, doesn't it? Yeah, I think... Um, you know, you look at the, you know, you look at the goals that Chick scored, and these are positions that that really good strikers, when they're confident, you know, and they're in a good, good, good place, and they feel everything is going to work out just right. They go into these areas, but you know, there's been a number that, a number of times that Adam Chickson has been in those positions and missed, and you can say he's only two yards out and he missed, and that that could be quite scary for a player and it could knock their confidence but then you're t now you're into the whole world of, of uh, mentality and, and people's uh, you know their makeup and their personality and, and this is what for me I've caught a lot let's be honest I mean the guy's got real quality as well you know we're talking about a player that plays in championship football and uh, 
you have to have, of course, quality. But then on top of that, if you have the right set of mentalities, then you can really achieve. And this is, that's, that's why Chicks has been so great. And this is the first opportunity we've, we've had to chat with you since it was uh, confirmed that uh, Wrexham won the title. And of course, it will have to be the route of the, the playoff for Notts County if you ch to achieve promotion this season. Have you had to alter the mentality or have any different chats with the players at all on the back of that to kind of like refocus them ahead of the uh, ahead of the York game and the playoff campaign, or is it a case of just doing what you have been doing all season? Yeah, try to just address it. You know, in, in the first morning that we we came back together, then we were off, of course, after the, after the game because the players need to see their family recover. And during the the travel back, we understood that we 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 came second. Uh, and so then when we first meet, OK, guys, we, we came second in the league. So well done for trying. So make it such a tough, uh, such a tough season. Well done for that, for trying so hard to get to the top. But it's done. So now we have to move on and our preparations start now. And I think just a simple reset like that is, an, is enough at times to clear the air and everyone now concentrate on the job. So, you know, and, and of course, I think it's important to say well done to Wrexham. What, you know, what an incredible, honestly, like a, just a machine. Uh, the results they churned out at home to drop two points the entire season, just just breathtaking, just incredible because we done pretty well, you know. And so to be, to be better than us, uh, we have to say, wow, well done. And yeah, I was going to say on the back of that as well, you know, as, as well as Wrexham have done, of course, they've won it this season as well. I thought it was interesting to see uh, the owners come out. I think Paul McKenney, um well, however you say his surname, well, get it right, uh, came out <laughs> and um, retweeted a post from Notts County saying that, you know, they're one of the most exciting clubs in, in any sport. And just want to kind of like get your get your thoughts on that, that, you know, they're, they're also recognising how far you've pushed them as well through this season. I think they've been so gracious, the whole club in... in um, you know, showing enormous respect towards us, and I think you know we we've done the same. I think that you know if there were three or four teams in a in a title race, everyone is uh, more pitching themselves against each other. And but I think it got to the point where both groups of staff and players were okay. This is not normal, and we we have to show respect. And and they've been very very gracious in the in the their comments towards us and, and they've been very well received. And uh, the players, I thought the Wrexham players were incredible after the game. They were, uh, showed a lot of warmth and respect towards us. And that, that's, uh, that's actually not very common in football. It's really not very common at all. And uh, I think it's, it's, been, it's been a very classy affair between the two, two clubs. We've fought you know, toe to toe, we've, we've, we're rivals, we're competitors. We played against each other in a ferocious way here. We played against each other in a ferocious way at their place. The atmosphere was it was brilliant in both games. You know, proper, proper rivalry and determined to beat each other. But after that, then maturity and class. And something that's quite, I think, sad that we don't see a bit more of that. And there's a balancing act between being absolutely driven to beat each other and, and to do whatever it takes on the pitch and make your preparations and play tough and be mean on the pitch and you know there's there's times when players within the boundaries of the game they cheat you know to get an advantage and that's it's absolutely fine there's times when the when the dugouts are trying to influence the game shout the referee things like this is within the you know within a margin it's all part of the game and when that after that is all done then you shake hands and be honest with each other so no, I think we we cannot we cannot be disappointed with with the way that uh, everything has, has has unfolded because we gave our very very best effort. Definitely, yeah, and you make a very good point there. It's kind of yeah, it has been refreshing the way, like you say, for ninety minutes on the pitch, you guys you guys are at loggerheads, but there's such a mutual respect between the two teams, given the rivalry, the context of this season, how intense it's been throughout. Yeah, it's been from yeah from my viewpoint at least as well, very very refreshing. I'm sure um, I'm sure some fans would agree with that. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, there's, there's, there's really seriously terrible things that go on in, in the world, you know, and uh, um, football is a, is a show. Football's a show and we need to have pour our, our passion and our enthusiasm into the 90 minutes of football, you know, and 
the fans going to chant to us and our fans going to chant back to them and really take the mickey out of each other and you know rub it in when we and and once this is done then we need to try to bring some some you know harmony back into at times I think to you know the the I think maybe the 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 last one uh, people used to talk about was getting a stand innovation at Anfield when if you went there and played really well you get a stand innovation and and people spoke about that and that was you know fantastic one of the best clubs on the planet and even even the fans are part of that culture and that was really powerful that was incredible so I think something more towards that would would be brilliant and we, we you know at the fans here are just different class because they you can't pull all out they know everything because they've seen everything they know what they're looking at so you have to be really really good and then what well, if you are then afterwards you get you know you get shown the respect Absolutely, and then uh, yeah, looking ahead to the, the weekend, York City up for the final home game of the of the regular season. What are you expecting from that clash? Well, I think I'm expecting us to to play in a in a manner that has become uh, has become our, our style and uh, our identity. Um, that's what I'm expecting from us. I don't, I don't know what what the opposition will try to do there. I'm not exactly sure their approach to the game. We will try to give the best overview to the players, but I can certainly, um, I can certainly have expectations on on on, on my own group, and they'll, they'll be set in training and uh, in the preparations. Great stuff. And I remember you saying um, in the build-up to Maidstone last week that it was an opportunity for them. You know, they've, they've relegated for the season, sadly, and you know they could be trying out different things or you know experiments with different systems, players. With the, um, you know, of course, second, seconds confirmed by a long way, um, is, is this a chance for you to potentially rotate and try a couple of things out ahead of the playoffs or is it a case of building momentum and stick to what you know? Well, I, I think I, I've shown that I rotate the, the squad anyway a lot and, and we, we, we very rarely see the same lineup going consistently, which is very, you know, really common in, in many teams, but not so much for myself, the players, change quite quite a bit and uh, we, we certainly won't be you know taking the game lightly and uh, just changing for the sake of changing but we're gonna we're gonna try to to win be some changes I'm sure from the last uh, lineup but no we're, we're playing to to win the game and play well great so, fun. so no debut for the day just yet then <laughs> we we couldn't catch him to be honest. We, we managed to usher him out, but if we could have, if we could have, talk, I think the only one who'd give him a run for his money would be Toby. But he's he's injured, so no one else could no one else could get near him to be honest.